Uh, uh, so we're so glad that you're here. Uh, if this is your first week with us, I hope that you know that this is a kind of a, it doesn't necessarily build on itself. So if you couldn't jump in last week and you're here this week, welcome. We're so thankful that you're here. I'm Kate and this is Rebecca. And we wanted to do this mama study as a way to reconnect with all of you. We love you so much and we've missed you so much. And, um, we thought it would be really fun to look at moms from the Bible and on this Bible study, what we're doing differently than what we do on the podcast is we're just going really deep yes. in the word yes and looking closely looking deeply and so we're so glad that y'all are all here with us and I just need a little sip and Rebecca is up tonight last week I um, had the chance to teach on Hannah and if you miss that <clears throat> you can watch it on our YouTube channel or you can listen to it on the podcast the teaching and we have a podcast episode about Hannah where we bring Hannah into modern life which we did okay the podcast is life. It's hilarious and also substantial. You sugars. We love y'all so much. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So let's review just a little bit from last week. We talked about Hannah and Hannah is a woman from the old Testament. She was barren, could not have children. And so year after year, she would go to the temple and she would pour out her heart before the Lord that he would bless her with a child. And in fact, God did bless her with a son. And she had promised the Lord that if he gave her a son, that she would give him back to God. And so when he was, we think about three years old, Hannah took him back to the temple and she gave him to the priest to be brought up in the Lord. And so, um, before we started this study and Kate and I were kind of discussing the moms we were picking this mom that I'm teaching on tonight was on my heart and Kate had one on her heart. So as I began studying this week, it was really cool for me to see that these two moms are connected. Well, so the mom that we're going to talk about, uh, tonight actually has to do with a wife of King David. Um, and I don't know if you guys know this, but Samuel, who Hannah gave to the temple, ended up growing up to be someone that God used greatly. And Samuel actually anointed the very first king, which was King Saul. And then in the Old Testament, King Saul went crazy, <laughs> like literally. <laughs> Didn't he like go out in a field and like eat grass or something? He got, he, I can't remember the specifics of that, but he did yeah, lose he went it. crazy. And so God sent Samuel to anoint another king. And that king was King David. And so you might remember that story from the old Testament that Saul Samuel goes and uh, Jesse brings all his boys before him. And none of the boys are the ones that the Lord picks. And so Samuel says, do you have any other kids? And Jesse's like, yeah, it's like the youngest out tending the sheep. And Samuel says, go and bring him. And when David gets there, uh, Samuel anoints him to be king. And so I just think it's a cool connection. That's a really cool connection. I love these it. Two people. Yeah. So David was actually anointed to be king, we think around age 15, but did not take the throne for quite a few more years because Saul continued to be king um, and David actually served him. But um, I had a little timeline here. I don't know if you guys can see this, but <clears throat> it's a little far off. I don't know. Like I'm one of those people that kind of likes to know how things fit in history. Okay. She's, it's going to be okay. Nobody worry. Okay. So just look here. It shows on there that Samuel was born around 1102 BC. And then if you look at the next date, it's when David is anointed king about 1025 BC. Just so you know, Samuel was about 77 years old at this time. And then in 1003 BC, David becomes king of Jerusalem, which is both the northern and southern kingdoms. And he's about the age of 37. And by this time, Samuel has died. So I just wanted you to see that Samuel lived to anoint King David and for a little bit after that, but then he passed on. And so David becomes king at age 37. And this is the time period of our story that we're talking about today, because we are talking about, are you ready? Give it to us, girl. Bathsheba. <laughs> Did y'all ever oh, think don't, they don't look excited? I know. Did you ever think this is the mom we would pick? <laughs> don't be scared. Nobody be scared. It's going to be great. Okay. Really? Like I've had the best time studying her this week. God has shown me so many things. Oh my goodness. I'm so excited to share these with you tonight. I think it's going to be, I'm so excited, but you can understand awesome. how they're kind of like, excuse me. Why do I, why are we picking her as a mom to study? Okay. This is the thing. I honestly have never heard a Bible study on Bathsheba. Yeah. And if I did hear a Bible study on Bathsheba, when I was growing up, it was always in a negative connotation that she was the seductress, that she had wooed David and that he committed adultery with her. And it's almost paints David, right? In uh -huh. this like limelight uh -huh. and her in this poor light. And so we about to switch the story people. Okay. Yeah, we are. Mm -hmm. okay. 
Okay, so real quick, Bathsheba, her name, Bath is Hebrew, it means daughter. And then Sheba is Hebrew, it can also be pronounced Sheba, and it means to take an oath. So her name actually means daughter of an oath. Wow. In scripture, it tells us that she was married to a man named Uriah, who was one of David's mighty men. Scripture tells us he had 37 mighty men, which like when it talks about these dudes, they like killed people with toothpicks and Q-tips and they were like amazing, like could make a movie out of them. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Why but Q-tips they, and toothpicks? Like when you hear, when they talk about him in scripture, it's like he killed like 800 men with a sword by himself. I mean, these are mighty men. Okay, okay? sure. That's great. So let's just, Uriah's got it going on. Yeah. Okay. He's a strong dude. Yeah. Her husband. Her husband. Okay. So she's married to him. And then the setting is in Jerusalem um, at David's palace. Okay. And so we're going to start our story in second Samuel. So if you have your Bible with you, you can turn to second Samuel verse or chapter 11, and I'm going to read for us a few verses and then we'll talk and we'll kind of go through it. So we're going to start second Samuel 11 verses one through five. It says, in the spring of the year, the time when kings go out to battle, David sent Joab and his servants with him and all Israel, and they ravaged the Ammonites and besieged Rabbah, but David remained in Jerusalem. And it happened late one afternoon when David arose from his couch and was walking on the roof of the king's house that he saw from the roof a woman bathing, and the woman was very beautiful. And David sent and inquired about the woman, and one said, Is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? So David sent messengers and took her, and she came to him, and he lay with her. Now she had been purifying herself from her uncleanness. Then she returned to her house and the woman conceived and she sent and told David, I am pregnant. Okay. So that's the most popular passage that I've heard taught about Bathsheba. Yeah. And so mm-hmm. I just wanted to go through this little bit and show you, because what we're doing tonight is we're taking the story, not from the perspective of David, but from the perspective of Bathsheba. Yeah. I right. want to see this through her eyes and what she experienced. So David sends his army out to war. And the reason that armies fought in the springtime was, of course, for weather-related reasons. It was easier to move about. It was easier easier to engage in battle. But for some reason, David stays behind. So David stays behind and does not go out to battle. And he arose from his couch late one afternoon. Commentators think he was probably taking a nap. And he arose from his couch and he went up to his roof and he took a walk and it says he saw a woman bathing. And the way that I've always heard it taught is that Bathsheba was on her roof bathing in plain sight of God and everybody, like showing her body off. Yeah. Uh Uh-uh, people. No, not true. Okay, let me tell you why. Okay, first of all, um, custom for that time, people only bathed when they needed to. Like we bathe daily. You've already had your bath for the day. Um, during COVID, we may have bathed once every two weeks, but that's, you know, a different time sure, period. Yeah. Um, in this time period, they only bathed for special occasions. Okay. So she's not, she hasn't planned some like repeated exercise to like show her body off to somebody. Sure. Also, it says that she was on her roof. Women did not bathe themselves on their roof. Um, so basically David's castle kingdom palace is the tallest in the land, of course. So I'm sure that he can see everything around him and imagine these other homes that are close to him. Uriah was one of his mighty men. So it makes sense that he would allow him to live so close to him because he was a trusted servant. And so it says that women would usually go into an enclosed courtyard, right? So something with four walls yeah. so that they were in a modest place, but it had an open top to it. And the reason was, is that sometimes they would collect rainwater to bathe with. Okay. They didn't have plumbing. It wasn't like you just right. turn the faucet on. So potentially Bathsheba goes out to her courtyard um, and bathes herself, not with a tub or a shower. She has a jar of water. She's pouring it over her head. She probably has a servant helping her. Um, and she is not showcasing her body for the world to see. But because of what David has done, remained at his castle uh, while the men have gone off to war right. and is walking around on his roof, he can see into her courtyard. Yeah. So I just, I feel like people have always painted her in this light, like she was doing something purposefully and she was not. The other thing that scripture tells us is that she was cleansing herself or purifying herself from her monthly period. Yeah. Moms. (laughs) What are you about to say? (laughs) Look, 
when I have had my seven days of <laughs> torment and I'm taking that bath, uh-huh. it ain't fun. I'm not like, woo woo. Like you got to clean. I thought you were about to talk about, well, something we don't do anymore, but you know. No, I mean- I, Kaylee, <laughs> I was not going to say that word. I thought that's what you were going to do. They don't even know what you talking about. I didn't say it. I didn't think it. It's not in my notes. Is it Summer's Eve? <laughs> she said it. She said it. I remember those commercials. I thought that's where you were going when you have that not so fresh feeling. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I remember the day that I asked my mom, like, what is Summer's Eve? What do you use it for? <laughs> do they even sell it anymore? I'm so hot. These She's ring struggling. lights are hot. I'm in oh a sweatshirt. This is a lot. No. Okay, listen, I use a loofah and some soap on your underparts and I clean my body well oh my gosh. I cannot believe we're talking about this oh man I can't even Listen, handle it here's what I'm trying to say people okay that bath it's not the enjoyable bubble bath where you're like reading a book contemplating life we tried to get in and out because we tried to clean some stuff up okay okay I just for the audio we're just gonna keep going because I feel like we could stop down here for a really long time. Okay. Yes. Go okay. Ahead. Go ahead. So I just feel like she is not trying to seduce a man with her shower after her monthly period. No, I think that's a good point. No, she is just trying to clean her body in the privacy of her courtyard. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Stop crying. With a loofah. <laughs> with a loofah. I don't know what they used back then. No, they did say they used something. I can't remember what it was. Anyway, I read about it. Okay. So listen, I just want to make the point that I feel like Bathsheba is on the up and up, right? She, is, sure. I she agree. is married to Uriah, one of David's mighty men. I yeah. bet he was handsome. It's so handsome. Mm-hmm. She's taking a bath in her courtyard because she is praising the Lord that she has gone past that seven days and she's got 21 of freedom. All yeah. right. Cause okay. we count, right. We count the days. I got 21 of freedom. Okay. All right. Yeah. And then what's David doing? Mm. Taking a leisurely stroll on the roof, mm. peeking into people's windows. Oh, peeping David. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So then he sends word to ask about her, which I'm like, dude, you already know who she is. If she's living next door to you, you've probably seen this woman before. Mm -hmm. And then when he figures out who she is, which in my mind is like him trying to like talk himself into what's about to happen. Mm -hmm. He sends for her Mm -hmm. and ladies in scripture, it does not say that she gets a choice. Mm -hmm. You did not tell the King. No, she Mm -hmm. did not have a choice. She had to go with the messengers. Mm -hmm. Um, And there's so much, I read a so much commentary and discussion on what happened in the palace that night. And I just want to say that I wanted to throw my computer a couple times because I feel like some men that think they're real smart in the Bible have decided to like call out what they think happened. And it just made me angry. Yeah. Right. Yeah. As a mom, as a woman, as somebody that has a daughter to imagine that that would happen to somebody that I love. Right. I just can't even handle it. Right. And I just put myself in her position and think, bless her heart. Mm -hmm. She had no choice. No. Right. Right. I, you know, it's a, it's a really hard thing to talk about, honestly. And, you know, you have to imagine that with all the people that are listening, that for some of them, this is maybe a trigger point, you know, because there may be some emotional pain associated with that. Um, and so, uh, you know, if that is true for you, I hope that you know that, um, our, our hearts are with you and, um, you know, you just can't even imagine how painful it was. And I believe that God has included her story in scripture because what we're going to see out of this woman's life is amazing. Okay. Yeah. Based on her experience and what she had to go through Yeah. to then become a mom and do what she did. I think you guys are going to be really just humbled to yeah. hear her story. Yeah. Now I do want to say it's interesting to me because when I read this story of what happened to her, it reminds me of another story in the old Testament about another woman of the Bible, Esther. Yeah. If you guys remember Esther, she was taken from her home as a teenager, brought into the king's palace because he was looking for a new wife. She was also sent in to be with the king one night, and she again had no choice. Right. Women were property. They did not have a voice. They did not have a choice. I think she probably felt protected because she was married, and obviously that didn't matter to the king. 
And so for me, I just, man, my heart just goes out to her. Yeah. She was a beautiful woman right. that was minding her own business. Right. And she was taken from her home. Right. So the fact that we get to see part two of this story, it's amazing to me that she came from where she did and she went on to do amazing things. Amazing things. Agree. Because thankfully that's what's true is that her story doesn't stop that's there. That's right. Exactly. Okay. So now we're going to go and I'm just going to summarize the rest of second Samuel chapter 11. So basically, um, she becomes pregnant and David has to figure out what to do about his predicament now, because his sin has obviously given birth to what is going to end up being death. He sends for Bathsheba's husband. He brings Uriah home. He says, Hey, I just wanted to see how the battle was going. Why don't you go home for the night and hang out with your wife? Because in his mind, he wants to rewrite the story yep. and make him think that this baby is his. And Uriah is such an upstanding dude that he says, no, my men are sleeping in tents. They're on the battlefield. I'm not going to go enjoy the comforts of my home. And he sleeps outside the King's door with the servants on the ground. Yep. And so David tries again, he brings him back in, he gets him drunk. He thinks this time he'll go back and sleep with his wife. And again, Uriah is an upstanding dude and he does not do it. Yeah. And again, in my mind, I'm wondering, does Bathsheba know that her husband is right next door? I wonder, I've never thought about that. I wonder if she knows. I mean, I think she does. I would think it would be a big deal for somebody to come back from the battle and then to report what's going on. Yeah. But you and know, I'm they just... don't got cell phones. It's like, how would she, how would she know? But text me when you're in the neighborhood. Yeah, <laughs> no, no. But I just, again, I think bless her heart. She is in this place where she is broken. She knows that something's happened. That's not right. She can't change the circumstances. Yeah. And this man that she loves that she calls her husband is literally within reach of her. And she can't get to him and tell mm. her story. Mm. I just, man, I just, my heart breaks for her. Yeah. She was put in an extremely difficult situation. Yeah. David is desperate. He knows he can't do anything about it. Uriah is not going to give in. And so he decides the only thing left to do is to kill him. And so he writes a letter to the head of the army. He actually sends it by the hand of Uriah back to the battlefield to the commander of the army and says, I want you to put Uriah at the front of the battlefield. And then when the uh, other army comes against you, I want you to back up and just leave him there alone and let him be killed. And he is, and not just Uriah, but like 20 other men are killed in this battle. So David's sin has not just given birth to uh, hurting Bathsheba, creating a child out of adultery, but now he has killed her husband and he's killed other men. I mean, it's deep. It's deep. It goes from bad to bad to bad. One yes. bad decision leads to, yes. right. Yes. There's a scripture in James. If you just want to write it down to look at later, there's a scripture in James, James 1 verses 13 through 15. That talks about um, that when sin is conceived and gives birth, it, it ultimately brings death. And that's yeah. what happened in the situation with David. Yeah. So here we have Bathsheba. Um, she's oppressed. She's lost her husband. And the Bible says after her time of mourning for Uriah, David brings her into his home. And so I just tried to think about some of the things that she might be feeling. I think she was feeling helpless. Yeah. She had no power to change her circumstance. She was bereaved. I would think she was greatly saddened by the loss of this man that she had called her husband that from scripture sounds like a really upstanding guy. Right. Yeah. He sounds no longer, like a winner. A winner. And, yeah. She no longer has him and she's oppressed. She was subjected to a power that took something from her that was not right. Yeah. Um, and that's something that she could do nothing about. She had no choice in the matter. Yeah. And I just thought just for a second, just think in your mind, have you ever felt one of these emotions? Have you ever felt oppressed that maybe somebody else in power had some authority over you that you did not have a choice in? Have you ever felt helpless uh, in a situation where you really saw no way out? There was nothing you could do to change your circumstances. And have you ever just felt bereaved because you'd lost somebody that you loved dearly? I just, I am so reminded in this time of COVID that it's not just a pandemic of mm -hmm. a sickness but it's a pandemic of just life in general that has taken people we love yeah. that has put us in difficult circumstances. Yeah. Um, I mean, those are the things that are far more like deep to me that people are hurting and maybe they don't feel like they have any way out. No. And the pandemic only, you know, amplifies it because they don't, they can't, you know, you have these funerals where you have to watch a zoom, you know, mm -hmm. and you can't mm -hmm. go and hug someone that's mm -hmm. grieving and you, you know, it's just, it just doubles down on their pain. Yes, yes, exactly. Um, 
this is the Bathsheba that I want to know and love a woman that has felt the deepness of pain and sorrow and has decided to take a different course. Okay. So this is part two of our story. She comes into the palace. She becomes David's wife. And through a course of events, um, the child that she and David bear dies and the Lord takes him. And the Bible says that while the child is sick, that David, um, lays his face before the Lord because he knows that what he has done is wrong. Mm -hmm. um, and when the child is dead, he rises up and he washes himself and he eats some food because he knows that the Lord's, the Lord has decided that's the right. Of it's this. done. It's done. Yeah. And so we pick up in second Samuel chapter 12, verse 24 through 25, second Samuel 12, 24 through 25. It says, then David comforted his wife Bathsheba and he went in to lay with her and she bore a son and he called his name Solomon and the Lord loved him and sent a message by Nathan, the prophet. So he called his name Jedidah because he was loved by the Lord. Mm. Um, the verse, the Hebrew word for comforted here means to console, mm. to be sorry. I really believe that David went to Bathsheba and knew the gravity of what had happened. Yeah. There was repentance. Yes. Did it, what did, it, did the prophet Nathan come to David at that time and make him? So that's part of the story that we skipped yeah. over just yeah. for time. But um, in chapter 12, you can read the whole intercourse between Nathan and David but where he, he got confronts it. Yeah. David with his sin. Yes. He got how bad this was, how yes. bad he messed up. And praise God that there was conviction and yes. repentance. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And so when they lay together again, God blesses them with another son. And this son is named Solomon. And it says the Lord loved him. Mm -hmm. And it's important to know this because Solomon's going to be a very important king in scripture. Um, he was not David's first son. He was not the rightful heir to the throne. Um, obviously, he came through great pain yeah. from a decision that David made that was sinful but God was able to bring something good from the situation. And if you read even further, we find out Bathsheba actually had four sons by David. Solomon was not her only son. So she had four boys. Um, and so David, um, through a course of events, if you read further in scripture, there's lots that goes with this story. David actually declares that Solomon will be his heir. And so in front of the people and in front of the commanders, he declares that Solomon will be his heir. Well, when it comes time for David, he's at the end of his life, he's about to die, a kind of a coup arises. And one of David's other sons decides that he's going to be king. His name was Adonijah. So Nathan, the prophet, the same Nathan that confronted David with his sin comes back to Bathsheba, okay, and says, Bathsheba, there's kind of a coup. Adonijah's trying to rise up and become king. I think you should go before the king and remind him of the oath that he promised you wow. that Solomon would be the king. Wow. Now, if we know anything about scripture, you don't just walk into the king. Right. You got to have some guts. Mm -hmm. And scripture tells us in 1 Kings 1. So if you'll go with me to, to 1 Kings chapter 1, and we're going to start in verse 15, 1 Kings chapter 1. Verse 15, it says, so Bathsheba went to the king in his chamber and Bathsheba bowed and paid homage to the king and said, the king said, what do you desire? And she said to him, my Lord, you swore to your servant by the Lord, your God saying, Solomon, your son shall reign after me and he shall sit on my throne. And now behold, Adonijah is king, though you, my Lord, do not know it. He has sacrificed oxen, fat and calf and sheep in abundance. And he has invited all the sons of the king and Joab, the commander of the army. But Solomon, your servant, he has not invited. And now, my Lord, the king, the eyes of all of Israel are on you to tell them who shall sit on the throne of my Lord, the king. Otherwise, it will come to pass that when the Lord, the king sleeps with his father's, fathers that I and my son Solomon will be counted offenders. Yeah. And it says that immediately Nathan comes in and he confirms everything that Bathsheba has said to David. And then David calls Bathsheba back in and he promises her that he will make Solomon King. Wow. Think about that's a big moment. Think about where this woman has come. Yeah, that's big from where she started. Yeah. In that courtyard bathing to losing a child mm -hmm. and her husband to then having four sons by this man. And now her son is sitting on the throne as the king of Israel. That brings tears in my eyes. It's yeah, that's amazing. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. 
Mamas, this is amazing. This is what I want us to see. Okay. There's three things I want us to see about Bathsheba. Number one, she was not just a survivor. She was an overcomer. Mm. She did not just survive the situation. She overcame it. She took the hand that had been dealt and decided instead of dealing with bitterness and unforgiveness in her heart, she would choose a different path. Wow. Solomon became king at the age of 29. So for 29 years, she lived in that palace with David, uh, had four more sons by him. And then this is my favorite part. Okay. Um, do you know the Bible and scripture that is attributed to Solomon as having written? The, yeah, the, the book of the Bible. Okay. So Proverbs in the Bible is the book that's attributed to Solomon having written. Okay. And there's a very famous proverb that speaks to women that we use in Bible studies across America. Proverbs 31. Oh yeah. Uh -huh. The Proverbs 31 <laughs> yes. woman. Yes. yes. The Proverbs 31 woman. Yes. Okay. So let me just read you. Um, Proverbs 1.1 1, 1 tells us explicitly that this book is written by Solomon. Then we get to Proverbs 31 and we read this in the first verse. It says the words of King Lemuel, an oracle that his mother taught him. No way. Y'all stop right now because I'm getting chills. I have never seen that. <clears throat> okay. So the commentary that I read says that Lemuel, the name Lemuel also means devoted to God. Okay. Um, and that they think it could have been like a pet name that Bathsheba had for Solomon. You know how we all have like names for our kids that yeah. we call them? Yeah. And that this was actually the oracle that Bathsheba taught to Solomon to record in scripture okay. of the woman that he was to marry. Okay. Okay. So hang on with me. Cause I got to read this. I got to read this first part too in Proverbs 31. Listen, and I'm going to call this out. I don't know this exactly. Like we don't know. I mean, we don't know King Lemuel was Solomon. We know that the book is attributed to him, that yeah. the first scripture tells us that it was written by him. Yeah. There are some people that think it might've been a different dude. I'm just, I've been praying all day that the Holy Spirit would change my heart. And he has not changed my heart. Well, and we let me attribute this to Solomon. While you get ready, let me make note in the chat that um, not everybody loves Proverbs 31 because it has been used, you know, if, if it's typically, if you grew up in maybe a, church culture. Um, there have been times when Proverbs 31 has been used about women to put a bunch of rules on them and a bunch of regulations. So instead of it being a freeing thing or something to aspire to, it becomes burdensome. Yes. And so we just want to just knock that out. Think right about away. who it comes from though. Right. When you think about the woman that shared this. Yes. I'm like, this was a woman that had been through it. Yes. And looking at her son, Solomon, she says, this is who I want for you to marry. Mm. This is who I want for you to have in your home because I may not have had this story, yeah. but I want this story for you. Yeah. Listen, just listen to these first verses. She says, what are you doing, my son? What are you doing, son of my womb? What are you doing, son of my vows? Do not give your strength to women, your ways to those who destroy kings. It is not for kings, O Lemuel. It is not for kings to drink wine or for rulers to take strong drink, lest they drink and forget what has been decreed. Give strong drink to the one who is perishing and wine to those in bitter distress. Go down to verse eight. Open your mouth for the mute, for the rights of all who are destitute. Open your mouth and judge righteously. Defend the rights of the poor and the needy. Wow. Think about where she had come from. Yeah. She had been destitute. Yeah. Everything had been taken from her. And she wanted someone to speak up for her and there was no one there to do wow. it. And so she had to choose forgiveness in her heart and to take the repentance of King David and receive that and then move forward in her life. And now she has the opportunity to give her son, this beloved child that the Lord blessed her with here. Here's some wisdom for the future. Well, if you read Proverbs 31 in that regard, it totally changes. I agree the because way that you see it, it doesn't come from, I, I, I think that's so good because I think we come to Proverbs 31 and we think, well, here's this woman who had it all together, mm -hmm. you know, yes. she's doing all the right things and I can't do all the right things. And it feels like pressure. But when you look at it from this perspective of a woman who knew brokenness, who yes. knew pain yes. and, you know, for her to be able to, her first thing to tell her son is you defend the poor and the yes. needy, you know, think about what we'd want to tell our kids. Yeah. When my son grows up, this is what I want to say to him. Yeah. Baby, this is what I want you to do. Mm -hmm. This is the kind of woman I want you to look for. Yeah. 
Bathsheba was not perfect by any means. Right. She had scars to prove it. Right. And yet the Lord blessed her with four sons and one to sit on the throne as the king of Israel. Yeah. Oh! Yes. Guys, I just can't even handle it. Okay. Yes. Second thing I want us to see about Bathsheba is that she was an advocate. And this is where I think Mama Bear comes out, right? Don't mess with my kid. I'm about to get you. Okay. So Nathan comes and says, somebody trying to take the throne from your baby Solomon. She's like, not my baby. <laughs> and she advocates for her child. And she goes before the King and says, do you remember you promised me? Don't we do that with our kids? Yes. Don't we advocate for them? Advocate means a person who pleads for, or in behalf of another, mm -hmm. an intercessor. Mm -hmm. She interceded mm -hmm. for Solomon and yeah. went before King David and said, remember what you promised me. Yeah. We do that for our kiddos tomorrow on our podcast. When we record, we're going to talk about what it means to be an advocate for our mm, children. Good. Cause I think there's so much there that we can talk about so much. And it's hard to know sometimes, like, when do you draw the line? When are you advocating and when are you butting in? And yes, yeah, yes. But I believe Bathsheba shows us that we can be an advocate for our children in the right way. And yes. then this is the last one. It's so good. Are you ready? This one's so good. I'm ready. Yes. Okay. The last thing I think we see from Bathsheba is that she was honored. Okay. And let me tell you why she was honored. When you go to Matthew chapter one and you read the genealogy of the life and line of Jesus, there are five women mentioned in that genealogy. The first woman is Tamar, who was a daughter of David. That was David's daughter. She was raped. Scripture tells us she was raped wow. by her brother. Wow. And yet because of Tamar, she actually produced a son through another marriage that gave the line of Jesus. Wow. She's included in scripture. The second woman is Rahab. Mm. Rahab was a prostitute. Yes. And because of her allegiance to the Lord in a time of need, she ends up producing an heir in the line of David. Wow. Ruth, a foreigner. Yeah. She was not a Jew. She was not from Israel. And right. yet the Lord brought her back and she married into that family and she produced an heir to the line of David. Fourth woman, the wife of Uriah. Mm. That's Bathsheba. Mm. That's this mama right here who, because she chose not to let this bitterness destroy her is now included in the lineage of Jesus wow. Christ. Wow. And then Mary. Yes. A teenage virgin. Yes. Outcast. Y'all. Yeah. Do you not feel it just rising up in you? It does. It gives me chills. Y'all, we do not have to be perfect. Yeah. We do not have to have a perfect story. Right. We do not have to have all the ducks fall in a row because God says, no matter what happens to you, I'm going to pull you out of that. I'm going to make you into somebody amazing. Yes. And these women are in the lineage amazing. of Amazing. From so much pain. Oh, let's so sing much hallelujah. Yes. I feel it. I feel yes, it. Yes, that's incredible. That's so good. Well, it brings so much hope. It brings so much hope because you, honestly, you read that story and it's just like, gosh, this is so painful. Yes. And we know stories that are so painful and we have stories that are painful. Yes. We have so many stories that are painful. I am a hundred percent sure that on this zoom call, we have stories of pain. Yes. Thinking this is it. I'm helpless, right? I'm dirty. I'm, I'm dirty. Tarnished. Yes. Yeah. And God's saying, no, look at the women that I would include in scripture. I brought them up out of that. And I allowed them to be part of something great because they chose a different way. Yeah. Yeah. It's absolutely incredible. And I love that, he, you know, he chooses and he doesn't choose. He, somebody here in here said that they flipped the script, yes. you know, that he flipped it on its head, Yes, who we would have normally chosen to be the one, you know, where everything looked just right on the outside and everything seemed perfect. That's not who God chooses. You know, he wants people who know their brokenness and come to him. Yes. And I think it says something to the fact that as mamas, sometimes we think that our missteps in life or what's happened to us then becomes part of our child's story and nothing right. good can come for them. Yeah. And yet Solomon sat on the, on the throne. That's good. God said, I love this kid. Yes. Gosh, that's... I'm going to raise him up. Yeah. I mean, I just, I just wanted us to have a new perspective of Bathsheba tonight. I think yeah. she's gotten the wrong story. Yeah. I think people tried to have, have tried to pin her into a box that she did not create. Mm -hmm. And as a mom to a fellow mom, I see her. Yes. I see her story. That's I good. wish I could have been in that situation to, like you said, go in and hug and say, oh my gosh, you are amazing. And yet she chose to do that on her own and she flipped the script. Yeah. She yeah. wrote a new story. Yeah. And, and God can empower every one of us to do that. You know, God can empower when you say, 
I am broken and I need you. He steps in and, and he brings help. She needs a sweatshirt, but she even needs a sweatshirt. She does. She's mama. part of the mama tribe. She's part of the mama tribe. Yes. So good. Rebecca, that was absolutely amazing. Oh, oh. I got to pray. Cause I'm so excited and pray. I have questions. Please okay. Pray. Yes. God, thank you so much. God, I praise you because when I went into this study for Bathsheba, I did not know any of this. And I just thought, man, I feel like she's gotten a bad rap, but Lord, you, you changed it all for me. Um, so many times, even in today's modern society, we look at a mom and we think we know her story and we don't. And she was um, given a life she didn't choose, but mm -hmm. God, you allowed her to have the maturity and the wisdom to receive forgiveness um, and to move into that story, looking for the hope and the good. And you produced it, God. Mm -hmm. Thank you that today we still talk about her. Thank you that you included her name in the lineage of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Thank you that her story can inspire us, that it is not about the past. God, you can do great things with any situation if we will allow our hearts to be changed by you. God, we praise you for that tonight. Thank you so much for this time. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. <gasps> oh, Becca. What I love blessing. the Bible. Yes, I do. Um, I love getting to be on the other side of this, getting to be in the chat. <laughs> Ask you in the chat host. because I'm getting to read. I mean, you guys are amazing in the chat. I love reading what you're saying. Um, Lily said, God chooses broken people. Yes. Um, so if you feel broken, that's know that God has chosen you. Yes. And and um Oh, I wasn't raised in church. So I love hearing all these stories. Oh, uh, we serve a God of redemption and he redeemed her story. Yes, he did. Um, yes, he did also think of how she raises Solomon to come to a moment where he chose wisdom, you know? Yes. Yeah. Yes. That, that was mama God behind. offered him anything in the world and he chose wisdom. Yeah. Yeah. So good. Um, okay. So we have a question. We see a lot of victory for women of the Bible through their quiet strength in 2020, it feels like the loudest win. How do you navigate or balance standing up for yourself as women in silent strength and still being heard in this day and age? Gosh, good luck. That's, <laughs> that's a big question. Okay. But listen, we don't hear about Bathsheba until the day that she goes to fight for Solomon to be on the throne. Yeah. There are a lot of years of quiet strength there. Yeah. And it says that he was 29 when he came to the throne. Yeah. He had 29 years of a mama teaching him something, showing him something, pouring into him something. I think sometimes our quiet strength is our home. Well, that's the thing is I, I have a lot of people ask me, um, you know, how did you create a platform? How did you start speaking? How did you, you know, start teaching Bible studies and stuff? Listen, you start where you are. Mm -hmm. You just lead and teach out of the place where you are. God has, if you are a mom, God has given you a circle of influence. Yes. <laughs> he has given you a circle of influence. And if, and mother Teresa said, if you want to change your whole, mm. the whole world, go home and love your family. Right. And so, you know, it, we may want to scream on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter and yes. try and make our voice heard or, you know, Thanksgiving is coming up and your uncle one may be voting one way and then somebody's voting the other Sit at the opposite ends of the table, you know, and it might be contentious and you feel like you've got to say something. And, you know, I just feel like most life change happens in those one-on-one -on -one moments in that circle of influence that God has put in your path. Yes. Not necessarily the stage. And I think when you honor God with the quiet path, the path that's right around you, your kiddos, your home, your friends, your workplace, your staffers, yeah. that then God begins to open up opportunity for more. Yeah. I mean, Bathsheba, when Solomon became king, she became queen mother. Yeah. That's a huge role to fill. And you'll see, if you keep reading in the story, you see other times that Bathsheba, Bathsheba is able to use her voice yeah. because of her position, but she didn't have that position until she did the quiet moments of strength first. Right. Good. Okay. Any other questions? Um, yeah. Direct relationships are what God uses. Mm -hmm. One small moment has that ripple effect. Yes. That's right. Yes. Um, yeah. Quiet strength comes from choosing to be brave where you are. That's like a conference right where there. you Come are. On. You'd be brave where yes. you are. Yes. And you know, 
that is, that would be, you know, that's what I try and say is just, God, dig in where you are. Mm-hmm. You know, if you want to teach, teach those babies that are in your home. Mm-hmm. Um, if you want to teach, teach the women that live right around you yes. that are asking to borrow salt and sugar, you know, um, sounds like gather. Uh, Yes, that <laughs> that you you speak up in your circle of influence because that's where it's right. Yes, no, I agree. I just think so much of scripture is um, God taking broken people, just like we talked about, that are willing to be in the quiet moments of strength and do the hard things. Yeah. And some people he elevates and some he doesn't, and we don't know why. There's lots of questions we'll ask God when we get to heaven one day. But for now, I'm just so encouraged that he included the women he did, because to me, it gives me such hope for the life that I'm leading. No, there's no Martha Stewart, although she was in prison. So maybe she's not the role model we all thought she was. Kate (laughs) called her out. Yeah, you did. You want to talk Um, about Lori Laughlin too? Well, it's hard to pick like a pinnacle example, you know, but those aren't the women in the list. The women are the list are broken and that's who God uses. You know, God's economy. We're going to meet him one day. We're going to have dinner in heaven with these women. Oh, oh I'm having a dinner party. Gosh, can you all come to my house? Y'all come to my house in heaven. We having a dinner party. I want to hear Rahab's story about how she thought to hide those men under that week. How'd you do it? (laughs) Yes. Yes. Okay. So we want to honor your time. So we are going to, um, oh, Stephanie, she's redeemed with Snoop. Yes. Martha Stewart. (laughs) Do you know this say? Martha Stewart and Snoop are like BFFs. Do y'all know this? Y'all No. listen, I got Google that later. Yeah. Martha and Snoop and grass. They're BFFs. Grass? No, Who's you grass? don't need to know. Okay. All right. So here are um, our announcements. So you guys, first, if you'll text gather to 20411, you will get announcements. You'll get an announcement next Thursday with a Zoom link. So in case you forget or you get sidetracked, there it is. There's your um, reminder. So text gather to 20411. Would somebody mind putting that in the chat? Um, and then remember that on Monday, the podcast episode about Bathsheba will come out. Are we changing her name? Um, the podcast episode on Monday. I got to change her name. No, I'm curious if you want to. Oh, I haven't thought that far ahead. Let's just, let's keep her as okay. Bathsheba for now. Okay, great. Let's do on it, but that'll come out on Monday. And, um, then Wednesday you'll get this recording will come out just in case you want to hear it again. And, um, okay. So what you guys have been waiting for y'all are like, dang, get to the code, get to the code, (laughs) give me the code. We want the sweatshirt. I need it. Okay. So we tonight, just for you guys, we are giving you the sweatshirt and the hat for $50. So you go in and come on, y'all code, know if you go down to Racket and Jog and try and buy a sweatshirt like $45. Okay. So this is a deal right here. A hat and a sweatshirt. You know you want it. The code is Mama50. M A M A 50. M A M A 50. Um, can I just get a code for the sweater? LOL. I know. Dude, see? give the hat to your te- your kid's teacher. Come on. Oh, this is a yeah. gift right here. Come yeah, on. That's a good Christmas, idea. Christmas, we helping you out right now for the Christmas gifts. You know you ain't going shopping with all them people with COVID. <laughs> buy the hat right now. Well, the other thing is, is that all, you know, all, anything we ever sell, it goes back to gather. That's right. And so it helps like the podcast equipment that we're using. You guys help supply that by things that you purchased. Um, when we write Bible studies and they look nice, that's because you guys help do that because <laughs> we were able to pay a graphic designer, you know, that there are yes. so many things we yes. have a website, we have all the resources we're able to offer you are because, um, of, you make a donation. And so you go to gathermoms.com. We got a little shop, a little shoppity shop. Yeah. And I think it, I wish that you could hyperlink in here, but it's gathermoms.com slash shop. We got some fun pictures of Jenny. Jenny's in the picture. Our cutie Haley took our pictures. Right. So what we're going to do right now, we know we have some groups who are going to jump off and chat. Get the hat. Gotta get the hat. Oh, okay. Now we're going to, this is really tough because you guys, there are so many of you that are like super legit. Um, but tonight I think, I think we have to give it to Shelly Townsend because she is Shelly. watching from her football game. That is such commitment. Shelly Townsend. She is yeah. on from the football game. Woo, I see a hand wave. Um, hand wave. I want to give away like 10 hats. I see all these faces and I'm like, Oh, I want you to have so yes so come next week maybe we'll do something similar so we can give away more things yeah, but shelly 
seriously, you're amazing. Thank you for the Shout commitment. Out. Melissa, thank you. Thank you. Melissa, thank you for putting in the hyperlink. We love you guys so much. Um, you can get off and chat with your groups now um, or go to bed either way. We love y'all <laughs> so much. Good night. Good night.